Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Draven's Den. It's been a long, frustrating week, I know. And you just could not wait to get back to, you know, watching me and Draven. And Hodge is back, too! And Fred. Don't forget Fred. (laughs) So, tonight we have an awesome, awesome, awesome show for you, as, of course, I do every week. Um... We have founder of the Bill Carroll Foundation and the Institute of Performing Arts. You also know him as the production director, owner personality, and master of music mayhem of WQ, uh, sorry, WBQB B101.5. That's right. The B. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then afterwards, later on the show, oh, there's Bill. Say hi, hi Bill. Bill. <laughs> later on in the show, we have the wonderful and talented Rico Mickens, who is the 2021 winner for Best Director, Producer, and Writer in the DMV, which, okay, apparently I was the last person to um, to know this. Uh, DMV means District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. So, hey, who knew? But first up, we are going to be chit-chatting with Hodge because we have not seen him in forever. So, Hodge. Hi. What are you even doing? Breathing. Hey! <laughs> Everybody, warm round of applause. Working, He's been breathing. Uh, well, I guess the big thing. Hi, Bill. Again. Oh, thank you. Um, um, well, I guess the big thing was, like, last weekend was playing with the uh, Puff Yeah. Shit. At um, <laughs> the Troll Market downtown in the town square. Yeah, town square. And it's put on by John Lee and... Uh, Brianna Bevan played, who was on the first episode, yep. and then we played, and then Jenna Cole closed it out, and what's that? Eric, he's got that cool name I never could pronounce, what is it? E.K. the DJ. E.K. the DJ, sorry sir, <laughs> was providing all the sound, it was great as always. It was Just a good like time. Two years ago, because we couldn't do it last year, for obvious reasons. Right on, right on. <sighs> I know it sounds so exciting. <laughs> I try. I believe. It's not exciting stuff he's been doing, but yeah. I uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I got out this past weekend, and um, I I was going around, you know, doing a little Halloween shopping and, and, and all that kind of stuff, and um, I I actually caught a a girl checking me out. Um, so I did the you know the over the shoulder selfie thing. Um, <laughs> uh yeah it was yeah, something it was like good. that something like that yeah um eric um i, I see bill's lovely face i i don't see what what's going on with us um <laughs> you must have <laughs> lost the pain <laughs> you see bill that's all you yeah yeah I, 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 i'm so i don't know if you showed Half the, hour the picture yes yeah, it's, right it's, it's the all bill all the time <laughs> well the pin's up on the uh... there it is hey! right there <laughs> so Yes, um, I was one. Yeah, that's the girl. Whoa. Yeah, um, she was going to offer me candy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then after that, um, I actually had the opportunity to check off a bucket list item. Um, I went down to Lorray to Cooter's place. Uh, if you guys remember the Dukes of Hazard, mm. Hazard County. Yeah, and I met hey. Tom Wopat, also known as Luke Duke. Um, we had a couple of general leads there. That one is actually belongs to Cooter himself, Ben Jones. Um, yeah, um, very, very awesome. Uh, ben wasn't there, unfortunately, but Tom was, and I got a nice autograph, you know, picture of him and everything. Number of how many general leads there are that have been made officially from the show? Oh, from the show, there has there was rumor that they They'd had they had made like in the thousands because of all the jumps, so. because of all the jumps. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Uh, some of them actually, in a little tidbit that I found out, mm-hmm. was they were not all um, Dodge Challengers. They were not Chargers or whatever. Yeah, uh, they got just messed up. But anyway, um, yeah, we know. some of them were Fords, and then they took okay. sheet metal and made a shell, put it over top of it, uh, and they were wrecking Fords. Which I'm okay with. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I'm a Jeep guy. So, all right, so anyway, on with the show. We have our first guest, it's Bill Carroll, as I mentioned. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Welcome to the Bill Carroll Foundation. 
The Bill Carroll Foundation for Music Education inspires artistic expression and advances cultural literacy to musicians, especially with a disability or on the autism spectrum. The foundation honors America's rich, diverse, creative musical and visual talent, along with its heritage through active community engagement. They say strength comes in numbers, ours comes in form of a deep passion of the arts. We call this education through imagination. As proud members of the National Association of Music Education and many other industry affiliations, the Bill Carroll Foundation provides opportunities, guidance, and pathways to experience and learn art and design, drama, and music. And now, introducing our Immerse, the nation's first immersive mobile educational recording studio for people with disabilities. This immersive program will allow us to go anywhere and bring the mobile recording studio to those who can't go to a normal one. This will be particularly beneficial to musicians on the autism spectrum or other disability, giving them a safe place to grow their talent close to home. For more information on our programs and to support the Bill Carroll Foundation and the Immerse program here in Central Virginia, go to our website at BillCarrollFoundation.org. The Bill Carroll Foundation, education through imagination. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Carroll! Yay! And the crowd goes wild! <laughs> How you doing? Hello, today? gentlemen. No, sir. Man, that, uh, you know, making that video was, was kind of interesting because it came about where I was inspired by a, a local 24-year-old who has autism, who we did a big production for back at the Fredericksburg Academy earlier this year. And he wrote uh, a whole musical on his disability and his experience with COVID. He wrote it in like a week. This, this kid's a savant, man, and he plays guitar, he plays this, all kinds of different things, and he sings, and he's quite the ham. But um, it is just pretty amazing, and he inspired me to kind of make this and 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 do this uh, whole project, which I kind of had in the back of my mind, but other than that, he was he was definitely the pusher for it. So, well, thanks for having me, guys. How are oh, absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely, Bill. Um, so I guess, first off, uh, before we get to the to the, the meat of... of um, why I had you on the thing about this show is that it's meant to inspire people to say you know i can do it too you know yeah. um to not let uh adversity and walls and boundaries uh keep them from reaching their full potential and showing the world um and and i really love you know the studio idea and the foundation because you're you're literally doing the same thing you know um but you have, I mean, a laundry list um, of accomplishments and achievements. Um, you know, you won the National Crystal Award uh, for your audio production and creativity. Uh, you're a member of the National Association for Music Education, Network for Good, Fredericksburg Festival, Performing Arts, Discovery Kids. I mean, I could literally run out of breath um, with your rap oh. sheet, sir. Yeah, I've done a lot. <laughs> I have definitely done a lot, that's for sure. But um, um, yeah. so the first question is, you know, what got you started down the road? You know, what made you put the first foot on the highway to doing all these things? Um, just the love of music as a child and getting into my first radio gig was actually at the age of 16 uh, while I was in high school. Uh, of course, uh, being, you know, a mobile entertainer, being in theater uh, my entire life. And, and being up in New York, and I got a chance to rub rub heels with a lot of the most amazing people and, and living only 40 minutes from Woodstock, New York, which was like the hub back in the 80s, the hub of all of the best on the East Coast, of the best recording studios to all the artists. I mean, from The Who, I mean, anyone, anybody you say, I got to sit next to Pat Benatar one time in a, in a club up there. I didn't even know it was her. She was like four foot 11. I mean, she's a tiny little thing. <laughs> You know, and just to, to meet those musicians and being a musician, of course, I took all kinds of things in high school and, and middle school and elementary school, um, brass instruments, played the piano. Um, but working with my sister, who's five years older than I am, she is a teacher. I, got, I come with a whole family of teachers. Aunts, my mother was administrator for, for um, many, many years, God, 40, maybe 40 plus years. 
my sister, who I just mentioned, Kathy, she was a sign language interpreter, uh, and she dealt with all kinds of different disabilities. And my early 20s, being still in radio, I also liaison being becoming a counselor in a group home for dual diagnosed adolescent males. Woo, you want to talk about a wild ride that was. Um, did that for about two years, but I've always been drawn into mashing, I think, the two worlds together, you know, from um, being a part of uh, people with special needs pretty much my whole life. Uh, I have a nephew who has Williams disease, which is like the opposite of Down syndrome. It's the taken away instead of the extra chromosome without getting in technical science. But uh, yeah, and his love of music was just amazing to me. And then things that I've dealt with my whole life, and I found out that I have certain disabilities as well, which I don't really talk about. But um, the first one would be with my hearing pretty much my most of my life. So I've learned to deal with music visually. And as a little boy growing up, I could always see sound in colors. People are like, you can't see sound, you hear sound. But I've always able to see it if I close my eyes. And, and you know, if I think of different instruments or different frequencies, I actually see different colors. So I utilize that actually in my own teachings and, and learning. It's just a different way to learn musical instruments without even reading a note. And then I had to learn how to read notes. So it, it was pretty wild. So I was mashing the two together. And then as older I got, I noticed that there was a big need for these musicians with disabilities who didn't have the same, you know, perks or even facilities as you and I would if, as regular musicians, you know. Um, so dealing with that was, was something that said, you know what, something's got to be done. And then working in a theater with different with people with autism and, and Down syndrome and cerebral palsy. And it's just amazing. These people are like, blow me away in their, you know, oh my gosh, their, their abilities to do anything and pick up any instrument and start playing it. I can't do that. You know, I mean, many people can't do that. Hodge, for instance, Hodge is amazing with sound and he creates different, you know, I've known Hodge for many years. Hi, Hodge. And... But I, I'm just amazed at, you know, your your ability, you know, Hodge, to, to create, you know, music. So, but can you pick up any instrument and start playing it, like, flawlessly, like you're in a philharmonic? You know, I mean, like, it's just a wild, it's uh, unbelievable to me. So, I want to take that idea and bring this mobile studio to them. And it's not just a mobile studio. It's actually going to be a virtual reality experience of music as well. So... It's going to be where I can take it to festivals, schools, expos, anything with kids. It's for adults. It's really for anybody. And the virtual reality part is that you'll be able to go in and sing if you're a singer, play your instrument, but you're going to be on a stage with thousands of people in front of you virtually. So we'll be able to record that and then give it back to them like they were on stage or something like that. So wow. that's, um, yeah, yeah, that's really intense. And there's yeah. nobody doing anything like that, I've noticed. So there's, you know, there's mobile studios out there that musicians have, and, you know, they have buses that they turned into the second floor of a bus, you know, in terms of recording, but nothing for musicians with disabilities. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I got, finally was able to uh, have one of the Spotsylvania deputies families donated a fifth wheeled trailer camper to be converted but it was too big and I didn't have a vehicle to pull a fifth wheel. So, I mean, I couldn't believe that they were able to, you know, donate that to my foundation. So that was huge. So I sold that, took the money and then bought a regular box trailer, which matched the vehicle I have and it's perfect. And now right now we're, we're in the process of building it out, which is going to be the most amazing technically and, and visually uh, quite the attraction just to walk in and see it, you know, besides being a recording studio, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. So that's uh, kind of how I got into it. Now, real quick, before we get too far and, and I know you can only hang out until about eight 30, but, uh, I want to give, you know, some people a chance. If, if you have a question for bill about anything that he talks about or has talked about, if you're in the DC area, you can call three zero one seven one five eight five nine two. Passcode 052009. 
I know it's a lot of numbers, but uh, 301 715 8592, passcode 052009. And that, uh, that number will be live for the whole show. Uh, real quick, going to the Facebook Live, Nancy Bagley says hi. What's up? Nancy. Yes, Nancy. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, she sent me a message earlier. Odd fact. You guys met four years four years ago today. So happy anniversary. Wow, it's today, <laughs> huh? Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, she's a great uh, lady. For Hodge, uh, Linda Wolfrey says, hi, oh, Hodge, looking good. Um, hey. Let's see. And just let me know who else is in the room. Okay. So um, next question so with all the things that you do, planning is, is extremely huge, obviously. Yeah. Um, what is your, your, your five-year, you know, for this studio? I mean, where do you want this to go ultimately? Well, actually, that was asked of me about three years ago. Uh, in, well, yeah, uh, 2018 and 19 is when I actually started the, the thought of the project, and it just has evolved so much. So my five-year plan is actually I'm in my fourth year. I kind of, I kind of look at it as not even, you know, five years from now, because I'm, I'm in the, the middle of the goal of my first five years that somebody asked me, which is funny. Right. And yeah, I mean, we're actually going to make it happen. So the first thing I'm probably going to do with it is take it to some of the local schools, you know, start grassroots right here in Central Virginia, Fredericksburg region, um, and just promote it, bring it and, and show it off uh, and let them experience it. You know, and then uh, we have certain programs that I'm, I'm I'm working on also right now behind the scenes that will uh, be able to have schools, you know, utilize also this where they don't have the music, you know, and you know, uh, guys growing up, the music programs and schools have been slowly just ripped away from all the schools, mm -hmm. all the budgets, you know, that's where I want to come in where also with this we will be able to give a child you know, specifically, not only everybody, it'll eventually probably get with every child, but I really want to give it to the musicians that have a disability that don't have the instruments that they want to play, and we'll be able to buy it for them as well. So they'll be able to, you know, kind of like a scholarship, scholarship programs where we'll be able to give them, you know, the, the actual tools that they need, you know, even if it's, they want to be in producing you know, and, and sit down and, and build their own little home studio. We'll be able to, like you with your podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, we'll teach and show them what they can use uh, to create and, and record themselves at home. You know, so we'll take them through a whole process of that uh, and show them the basics. We do have, you know, other uh, programs that'll take them even further if they want to, like mastering programs, but that's, that's just down the road. But to, just to get them involved with, you know, having them learn what we do, I just love when they sit and teach and, you know, we even have <clears throat> a online radio station that's going to be just for them. It's called the Groove Factory. Uh, and it's also a record label. So the record label that I created is going to be only for these musicians, which is even cool. So that's what's going to be about taking them to any height they want to go. And if we want to create, you know, eventually once a year, probably a big production of the area musicians who have disabilities. And, and show off their talent to everybody. And I think that's going to be where this trailer can also form immediately into a front of house unit where I can do sound, and a full, full production facility, you know, um, and I can take it to any stage and fill it up with sound and lighting too. So we're pretty much be able to help them also be in front of a live audience, you know, first they get their virtual thing. But I think later on, one of the goals is, is to actually take them and create a show in this area, which I think would be neat. Maybe do it once a year, twice a year, whatever it comes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so as of right now, uh, how do people get involved with, um, you know, I'm not sure this project is far enough along for that, but if it is, uh, how do people get involved with your foundation? How do they get involved with this project? How do they, how do they help? How do they sign up? You know, if there is a sign up sheet yet, yeah, they can go to our website, buildcarrollfoundation.org uh, or mygift2, number two, kids.org or .com. Um, either way, it goes the same place. And basically, we have things that we do throughout the year anyways. Like we just did sound and lighting for uh, a stage show that was just with kids with disabilities and autism. It was that, that kid I was telling you about mm -hmm. who was 24 who wrote that musical. 
uh, we actually made it come to life, you know, come to life for him. We produced the show for him. It was at one of the schools. It was just amazing. We did it over a whole weekend. So throughout the year, I'm still doing big like laser production shows and, and fun things for kids and at kids expo. So we constantly need volunteers for that uh, as well. And the way we make our money is, yeah, of course, monetary is, is great. We do, you know, I, I do fill out a lot of grant forms. We do have a lot of grants that are ongoing, but help is always, you know, even a dollar, two dollars, 10 bucks, you know, anything like we do always, always helps. And it's completely tax-free. We're a 501c3, you know, registered company. So it's, uh, it helps that way. You know, I don't take a dime from any of it and it's all volunteer. Everything goes into, you know, purchasing either the equipment that we need or the purchasing of the actual musical instruments for these musicians. And that's what's where every dime goes, which is fantastic. You know, now, so, does, um, <clears throat> would you take donations of musical instruments? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad, actually, I'm glad you said that because someone just gave me a big bass guitar. Uh, so, you know, and I have like a little mini warehouse, you know, behind my place here and I, I'm starting to store a lot. I, somebody gave me a flute the other day and, and, but I got the guitar and absolutely trumpets, brass instruments, anything. Um, these kids will definitely utilize that as long as they're working condition, you know, uh, you know, we have, uh, two local places that I can bring it to them. You can get them tuned, you know, that we have, uh, but yeah, that's a bass. Someone gave me a, a violin, beautiful electric electronic violin um, a few months ago that I still have just, just waiting to be utilized by someone who needs it, you know? So yeah, we'll have different things where they can go to the website and they can fill out uh, either a volunteer form um, and that way, or if they're an actual musician and need something, they can fill it out too. And then we, if we grant it, we'll, we'll definitely grant it to them. But normally at a nine out of 10 times, we're going to work real hard to get them what they need. You know? <laughs> I know you will. I know you yeah, will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what's up, what, what's next for Bill Carroll? Um, I mean, aside from this project, I mean, I know you got 50 things going on at the same time, you know, where can people see you? Where can they meet you? Where can they, you know, give you a noogie on your head? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's you know. up, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody has to do that, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, completely, completely. <laughs> I got this great bald spot right here. They can just say, you know, hey, Bill. Yeah. For um, $1 donation. Yeah, you exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could take a Sharpie and write your name on my forehead. Uh, well, from working in the radio station, which has gained me a lot of exposure for the foundation, which has been great, uh, being the, the director of production for Centennial Broadcasting based out of Fredericksburg has given me a lot of exposure as well. So people can check me out that way. Uh, I'm around town always. I'm at a lot of uh, community events. Um, I do, I host trivia at hard times at four mile fork every Tuesday evening. So I'm there uh, for a couple of hours, just, just having a lot of fun with some, you know, trivia for and it's families, families can come in and do it from seven 30 to nine 30. And then they got to kick the kids out of 10, but, uh, I'm always doing something, you know, I'm always at my fingers, something we, uh, I'm on the board at safe Harbor, which is a child advocacy center. So we have things around town that we do to raise money for them. Um, it's all about the kids and that's pretty much what I'm involved with from the expos, the expo center, you know, they can just and hit me up anywhere from social media. I'm on Instagram everywhere. Um, uh, but pretty much, you know, if they have an event, please ask and I will totally show up and, you know, and, and bring some goodness with me if they need it, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, I'm all about helping out and just utilizing what I have to give back to anybody who wants to, uh, to be in the arts you know that's pretty much it that's that's yeah um yeah. that's awesome dude i mean i know there's you know you're out there doing that and there's a lot of other great charities you know as i, I had um kitty from the downtown dolls on you know they're they're down downtown Fredericksburg and, and everywhere oh, they are out. great they are yes. so fun yeah yeah I got, I got pied in the face with them a couple couple months ago <laughs> really yeah yeah they uh, i I donated my time to, to help them out. And uh, we went down there to raise money for what they were doing. And uh, I was like, sure, I'll come down. And they just got pied in the face. And <laughs> not. <laughs> I had uh, uh, Shannon Shaman Sullivan on, and there was actually yeah. a video of his pie in the face. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good. Yeah. yeah he's, he's, he's another character, too. He's, he's fantastic. And Fred, Fredericksburg has a lot of great characters. You know, yeah. you know, a lot of people with a lot of great personalities, you know, yourself and, and Kitty and brandy and shan man and 
you know, and I think that's what really makes Fredericksburg um, a very cool, unique place is that it has a great music community, a great charitable giving community. And, um, you know, I very much encourage, you know, anybody watching this, however you can help out um, to definitely get on board. And, you know, uh, it's like Bill said, you know, whether it's a quarter, you know, a, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever. Uh, if you have a musical instrument, uh, get in touch with this man right here. I mean, I know people have musical instruments sitting in the back of the garage that they just don't use. You know? Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. That's uh, a big deal, too. <clears throat> But uh, I want to thank Bill Carroll so much for coming on the show. Thanks um, for having me. No, this is fantastic. I really appreciate it. I was honored when you asked me. I really was. Uh, but, you know, um, it, it's uh, anything I can do to help get the word out, man. Really. Well, I appreciate it. But um, all right. So next up, we have the fantabulous, fantabulous Rico, not Swabby. Rico. <laughs> <laughs> we have the fabulous Rico Mickens. And he's going to come up and talk about his latest project, Gene, which um, I think, uh, let's see, episode two comes out in December, and somewhere in episode three, you'll see me in there. But right now, everybody give a round of applause for Mr. Bill Carroll. Yeah, there you go. Hey, <laughs> all right, Bill. <laughs> and um, so just, just wanted to mention also that um, Rico is the 2015's oh he he actually has done quite a few things 2015's street arsenal 2 he did 2017's hot boys 2018's runners 2 and most recently as i said the gene project but this is the preview for the second episode of the gene project roll that beautiful bean footage i think there's something you should know people Dr. Frazier and Dr. Lozado worked for were very dangerous people. Mr. President, are you sure we may not be prepared for the outcome? There is classified information that only two people know about. I think that's the reason people are getting killed. Detectives, the FBI are here to see you. I heard your program was ready for testing. Just bring me the information that you have. I'll bring in another shadow. Well, Senator, I don't answer to you. That's why there's a chain of command. Dr. Frazier confided in me about the gene sequence he had been working on. Now, why would the FBI be interested in our crime scene? I don't think you understand. We'll do the testing. We have the second and third floor. I'd like to know what the doctor created. This seems to be getting everybody killed. Is she still alive? For now. In the meantime, do what you have to do to get back on the project. Remember, your family is counting on you. So you don't just have a homicide on your hands, but a high profile murder. You cannot! They will kill my family! Anna, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. Come on, Anna. Big round of applause, everybody. That was a preview for episode two of Gene. Rigo, my man! How you doing tonight? Hey, what's going on? And Rico is coming to you live from his limousine. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, Rico, I, I have to say right off the bat, I'm pretty good at researching people I'm, uh, and, and, and places and things. You know, I, I do a lot of history stuff. I cannot find a picture of you anywhere. <laughs> like anywhere. <laughs> You are like the best kept secret in Fredericksburg. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so everybody take a screenshot uh, and, and then send them to dravensden at gmail.com. So I have a picture of this guy. 
was, um, what was it, uh, about a month ago, or maybe two months ago, um, I he had an event in Spotsylvania Mall promoting Gene. And I go in, I have no idea where they're at. Um, I don't know who I'm looking for. I, I feel like, you know, I'm like, okay, look for clues. You know, I, I, it was like literally a scavenger hunt trying to find him. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did ultimately find him. So, um, Rico, thank you for coming on the show. I know you were supposed to be here a couple weeks ago, but things got a little crossed and, and, and mixed up and everything. But uh, thank you for finally making it. Um, so, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, I know you like to put a lot of emphasis on your actors. And, you know, rightly so, without actors, you wouldn't have a show. So I definitely want to mention that Lauren Lee is this Detective Zoe. Um, Veta Lowe is Detective Daniels. There's also Donna Sibley, Sharon Tolliver. That name is very familiar. Um, I'm, I'm trying to place that name. I think she's worked with some other people that I know. And Rose Venny, am I saying that correctly? Uh, Rose, yeah, Venny. Venny? Okay. Um, yeah. And also, my personal friend, W. Keith Scott, uh, he was in House of Cards, if you guys remember that, that uh, TV series. And he was also in 2016's Oscar-nominated Loving, which, um, which everybody, everybody knows that, that film. Um, and Chris Wargo uh, is also in this. Um, he is the winner for Best Supporting Actor in the film Which Line Are You In? So this has a lot, a lot of great talent. Um, I was very uh, blessed when, when uh, W.P. Scott came to me and asked me if I would do just a small little part in it. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, Rico. Yes. How did all this begin for you, man? How did you, you know, um, your first project? You know, uh, just go back to 2015 Street Arsenal 2. Like, you know, what made you say, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get out of bed, and I'm going to, you know, do some writing, do some directing, do some producing? Um, My first film actually was 2013. It was a couple films that um, that you don't, you don't have listed. But my first one was actually in 2013. Um, I, I'm a bike rider, and it all started from that. Um, back in 1998, a lot of us used to cut up on the highway. I don't know if I should be saying it or not, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we, we couldn't catch that on film. So I said, man, I need to catch that on film. So I would catch the guys cutting up on 95, 295, uh, 395. And I put a little movie on the front of it. Um, and so people thought that, they was like, man, what, what are we watching? And then it was a movie for about maybe two minutes. And then it cut right into the video of the guys cutting up. So that's what it actually started from back in 1998. But, you know, it was just messing around. And then um, I guess 2007, I wanted to do a film. But, of course, it, it didn't get done. Um, then around 2012, I decided to try it again. And... We actually had uh, our first showing at the Paragon Movie Theater um, in 2013. That one was called, that was the first runners. Um, after that, we did a movie, a feature film every year, 2013, 14, 15, 16. We didn't, we went on Comcast and had our own TV network on Comcast. Um, so we broke the shows down to like 30 minute episodes. Um, then after that, we came back in, I think like 17 and 2018 at the movies. Um, at Paragon until the pandemic hit and everything changed. Right. Now, were there any significant obstacles? I mean, as as a director, you know, there's there's plenty of obstacles and, and hurdles to jump. And you know, I directed a couple of shows myself. And and uh, was there anything? What barriers have you found that you've had to go through that you know, producing and directing is hard enough, but was there anything that you really had to go through that you had to break through, dig under, go around to make these projects happen? Um, no, there were no barriers. Um, I did research before I started. I used to look at Kickstarter and Indigo 
to try to see how people were getting funded for their films. And, you know, I, I, I saw from Fredericksburg all the way up through Richmond and D.C. that films weren't getting funded through Kickstarter or Indigo. So I said, well, um, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to count on funding myself because I want to finish product. You know, I don't want to start something and then, you know, it, it doesn't finish. So, um, no, I really haven't had really no stumbling blocks, to be honest with you. Um, locations I got, once once people saw that I was filming, uh, it was, it was kind of easy because I had the insurance and everything that I needed. Um, I, to be honest, I, I don't think I really had any stumbling blocks to really stop me. Well, you're a very lucky man. <laughs> but... So, I mean, putting a, putting a film together is, is a multi, multi-step process and it takes a lot of planning and, you know, stretching yourself really thin um, to get it all done and then bring all the puzzle pieces together to create that, you know, that picture. Um, real quickly, you know, can you tell the viewers, you know, if there's any uh, videography, you know, uh, future videographers out there, any future filmmakers out there, um, kind of what is a thought process that you would you would recommend to keep everything organized? You know, like step one, do your research and so forth and so on. Um, you told me to do it real quick. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, we, yeah, we still got a little time. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, I think for one thing, you, you have to do your research, um, and, and, and look and see what something might cause, what it takes. Um, like for me, I'm self-taught. Uh, I never went to school for videography, for music or, or anything like that. Um, so it's basically, you had to, for me, I had to teach myself. I had to go look at programs, see what program I wanted. What, what was the requirements for the computer, you know, to handle certain softwares. Um, what, once you get all of that done and then you say, okay, do I want to spend this money? Do I really want to put this time? Then you make your move and, and, and go from there. For me, um, it became a passion, um, that I found out. You know, because I was like, I was spending my own money. I was teaching my own self. I wanted to do it. I wanted to, I want, I wanted to see if it could be done. Um, I only used one camera when I did my first first feature film. I used one camera for the whole movie. Um, I don't have no crew. <laughs> you know, when, I, when I tell people, uh, I, I remember with this, this young lady, we went to film, and I was in the film. And uh, and I told her that I said, you know, it's gonna be me and you. I don't have no crew or nothing like that. We came out to the location, and she thought I was playing. She said, "Okay, well, where's everybody at?" And I said, "Everybody who?" She said, "Where's the crew?" I said, "This is it. The camera and tripod, me and you. This is our scene." Because I had that that vision, and that's that's another thing you have to have. You have to have a vision of of what you want, but it doesn't come right away like you want. So I tell anybody, even in acting. Um, a lot of people that I work with have never acted before. Um, Val Lowe, Lauren Lee, none of them went to acting school. Sharon Tolliver, um, you know, a lot of people right here in the neighborhood, you know. But it's just, you keep doing it, you keep doing it, you keep doing it. You get better, 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 better each time. So, you know, like I said, for me, it was it's more like a passion. You know, you just got to have a drive. Right on. Is that now sure enough? <laughs> 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 well, well, here might be, this this might be the most difficult uh, question. Um, how would you define your directing style? Ooh, um, <laughs> uh, right right there, from, buddy. <laughs> very, very different from a lot of people who who have done professional acting on TV shows and stuff like that. Like Keith Scott uh, had a guy named Andre Pearson. Um, he's very well known too up in the Merlin area. Um, a lot of these people that have worked on big productions, when they came here, you don't get no script to see. Uh, he, he said that usually they were trained to read the whole script so they kind of get an understanding of the film. But he said with me, you only get the script for the scene that you're going to shoot. You might get it maybe two weeks in advance. That's about it. 
Um, so you only get it, you know, each time you go to film, you get a different scene. Um, he said he has never done anything like that before. He said, but kind of find out it works, you know. So he said, that's like your own style, almost like, uh, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of the guy's name all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, the guy with the walking sidewalk. The guy with the walking uh, sidewalk. Yeah, the people be, be moving, but their mm -hmm. arms and nothing don't be moving. Who? Oh, you're talking about directors. Yeah. Such a miracle, I oh. <laughs> Hitchcock? Hitchcock? Uh, Hitchcock? No, no, no. It's, it's <laughs> the way he... It, it, yeah, I can't think of his name that right now. <laughs> the, the producer. Stanley Cooper. But, uh, yeah, that's the, um, that's the unique thing, I think, that that somebody, a couple people have told me. Mm -hmm. um, we they actually run the whole script off of Facebook Live. Uh, Linda Wolfrey, uh, <laughs> she wants to know where do your ideas for film come from? Oh, that's a good one. Um, a lot of my ideas come from bits and pieces of my life. Uh, like for the runners, um, I dealt with communications before. Um, I'm a businessman because I, I got a couple of businesses starting from scratch, just like filming, starting from scratch, self-taught. Um, and so I kind of implement that stuff into my films, you know, um, like, like runners. It was a guy that started cell phones. He used to work for a cell phone company and they, he got fired. And so he decided to get back at the company and start his own on the side, but still using people on the inside and paying them to kind of use their network until he get his own business off the ground. So, um, and then government stuff. I used to work for the government back in 1986. I think, yeah, 86, 87. So whoa, I dealt whoa. with a lot of... Wait a minute, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean... How old are you? Yeah. You look like maybe 30, 32? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, this is how Gene came, actually came about. Okay, yeah, because that's my it's, next question. It, I, I want you to 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 uh, tell us about that. But but like, how old are you? Um, <laughs> fifty three or fifty four. <laughs> fifty three or fifty four. <laughs> the man so yeah, big, you don't know how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, great great segue. So um, so what you're saying is is that you're a government science project. And um, you're you're actually uh, you're reversing an age like that Brad Pitt movie. Benjamin Button. Uh, Benjamin it's Button. not reversing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's actually a aging slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great segue. So tell us about Gene. Tell us where it was born, um, and and you know, and catch us up uh, to where we are now. All right. Now, Gene, it actually started from the conversation when you're talking about, about age. Um, I know when I was in um, Manassas and I was hanging around a lot of young people, um, and they actually thought that I was their age. It was like 25, 20, 22. And when I told them I was like 35, they was like, what? Ain't no way. And so I've been hearing that off and on, and just like what you're saying. And I said, you know what? I said, I need to write something about that. And so that's kind of how Gene actually got started. And then I started adding in the government stuff and and uh, went on from there. Started adding the, the characters, the, the detectives. So, but yeah, that's the that's the actually the origin of it. Um when you get a little deeper, I, I don't I, I can't give you I can't give you the story away. Um, but there are little hints that you have to look for in each episode. Um, the one is the doctor. If you saw when he was writing, that was, that was one hint. When the lady found the case in episode one, what you saw in the case, that's another hint for later on. Um, episode two, that was episode one. Episode two, um, now that one, <laughs> that one goes a little bit more deeper, uh, not just with the genes, but there's also some other stuff going on with the government um, that's affiliated with Gene. Um, it, I, I try to do my characters where there's no one main actor. I try to make everybody a main actor. 
um, and, and, and each part of the film. So when you look at it, you're kind of drawn to that person. You get to the next scene, you're drawn to that person. So I can't wait to do your scene, really. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, that, that's the, yeah, that's going to lead to the last question I ask you, which is the most important for me, but, but please continue. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, um, but yeah, that's, uh, like I said, I don't want to go in too deep. Um, we're actually, we're actually filming episode three now. Uh, I'm going to put this out there. I'm always looking for actors or people who want to act. Um, right here in, in, in Fredericksburg, Virginia, Spotsylvania, Richmond, you know, Stafford, you know, Woodbridge, that, that, that's fine. Um, but I, I always have other parts that I like to add people in, you know, to kind of enhance the film. So I, I know it's kind of not what, what, what you want to hear, but uh, I just want to go ahead and get that out there. For, well, yeah, don't be taking know. my roles because, yeah. you know, I, I can put a mask <laughs> on and be another guy. You know, makeup is one. I know a great makeup artist, by the way, Donna. Um, <laughs> but um, so, where um, you know, where can people uh, find find you? I mean, do you leave like you know little clues? Because because obviously you're a big Easter egg guy. You love leaving Easter eggs in each episode, obviously. You know, and egg, shoot, I didn't know what an Easter egg was until probably a year ago. I'm like, I'm keep looking for eggs. You know, I'm like, what what is Marvel talking about Easter eggs? Why are they putting eggs in there? Oh, yes. <laughs> you know? But um, you know, how do they how can they support this this project? Uh, that's a very good question. Um the best way you can support this film is please subscribe. Uh right now we're in a critical stage uh of the film. The show might be canceled uh, if we don't get the uh, certain amount of subscribers. Um, me as a business person, um, I always have deadlines on everything that I do, so I don't waste time on something when I can just go ahead and start something else um, that might interest people. So, um, yeah, subscription is an important thing for us to continue to show. Just like a big production, you know, if if you don't have an audience for it, then why are you spending money in producing the show if nobody's really watching? So we, we have watchers, we got a lot of views, but we just we just need people to subscribe uh, for YouTube. And that's where our shows are gonna be at on YouTube. Do you so, have any uh, oh sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. oh, I just I can say the, the best way to find it is off of my Instagram because there's a whole lot of gene projects if you try to do a search on it. So the best way to find it is to go to RMP TV film on my Instagram and it, the link is in my bio and that'll take you directly to the uh, YouTube channel and you can subscribe. Right on. Yeah, please subscribe because I don't want this canceled before yeah. I get a chance to, you know, to, yeah. to, to film. <laughs> well, 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 we, 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 we will do episode three, so you will be in there, but before we go past episode three, we, we got to have those numbers before December the uh, 19th. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I, I guess uh, I, I guess what my big question is: When can I shave this thing off? I've been because <laughs> I've been growing this thing for four oh, or five months now, huh? That's for <laughs> That's okay. for G Yes, I'm growing this for that part. <laughs> right. Oh, you growing it for that part? I thought yes. you were shaved. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I've never had this before. <laughs> Oh yeah, I thought you gonna. I thought you was gonna be shaved for for the for the part. No, you said you wanted me to look older and more serious. And and when I said, you know, uh, do you want a beard or or, or whatever, you said, no, yeah, do the beard because it makes you look more intense. So I've been growing the beard for the part. <laughs> Wait, I don't feel intense with my beard. Intensity. I, I tell you what, shave it off. Shave it off, yes. There you go. Now you're telling me to shave it off? Oh, my right God. Right now, I'm Well, I, I thought we'd have, filmed, we'd have filmed by now. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. You mean that isn't a COVID beard? Oh, thank you, Joseph. <laughs> no, it's not a COVID beard. Um, 
I, I don't want to tell too many people what uh, what my role is. So, uh, if you, do you want to tell them what my role is, or or is that a secret? Um, it's part of a secret, but it's not that secret yet because they don't know exactly what you do. So I can I can say your role. Uh, he is an ex CIA agent. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> Um, do I get the, the James Bond music in, in the scene, you know, when I'm walking on, you know, something like some kind oh, of, you get music. I already got, I already got the soundtrack, soundtrack awesome. already done. you know, speaking of soundtrack, um, is that something with your past films that, that you put together? Uh, like, you know, how, how do your, your soundtracks, do you have local music that, you know, local musicians put music together for you or. No, um, I do everything. I do everything from the editing to the sound, um, locations. I was going to ask you about being. I do everything. Boring. That's that's the only what that's the only way I can get a film production done because I, I can't really can't afford to pay anybody. Um, no. We I used to pay from 2013 up until 2018 when I was doing the feature film. Mm. Um, Gene is now all volunteer. Okay. So, but yeah, that's that's the only way that I can get production done is to do it all myself. That's what I say. I kind of self taught. So yeah, when you yeah. Ask me about those those I, you ask me about those barriers. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I really don't have any barriers. Right. I don't have to wait on anybody. Intense beards. Yeah. Um, growing intense beards. That's that's a barrier. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm allowing you to cut it off, so now you have no barriers. <laughs> Amy. Uh, let's see. Kelly Copley, she has a question for you. Um, where did Rico get his initial seed money from for his first feature film? Where did I get my what money? The, the initial seed money for your first feature film. Um, I paid for it. <laughs> there you go kelly he paid that that's what in, independent filmmakers do you know we, we we pay for it ourselves yeah pretty pretty yeah. much yeah yeah to have a finished product you know like i said it's, yeah. a, it's a passion you you will spend your own money oh absolutely absolutely um you do get some help you know if you can um you know from other businesses or something like that or family or friends or you know like we've done sold t-shirts before we sold dvds um but you know even the tickets at the movie theater it's not enough to cover the full production you know all the actors got paid when we, when we did it that way mm -hmm. but um but yeah we had the uh red carpet the limo service they, they be asking me, man when we gonna do the movie i said man i, I don't do that anymore <laughs> 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 right, right, right. Um, so do you have any more promotional events coming up or it's like the one you did in the mall? Um I I, I don't really have any promotional events coming up right now. We're gonna uh, men the actors um are getting together um and trying to do like um a, a campaign to to save the show right now. So we're gonna be working on that and focusing on that. Um to, to kind of get that built up right now. I, I do have two other projects that I was casting for at the mall, um, but I, I really won't focus on those too much. Um, I, I got a few people that's coming on board, but that's not going to be my priority, but that's going to be like my second project, um, whether we continue with Gene or not. Um, I still have two other projects that, that I'm looking to get off the ground. So I'm always looking, I'm always casting. Right on. So uh, how so do they get a hold of you through your, your Instagram and your YouTube channel if they sh if they have interest on, on being the project? Uh, if you want to be on the project, um, you can reach me at RM. I can give my phone number for if, if you got some real people out there. <laughs> yeah, they're all cut, they're all cardboard cutouts, man. Yeah, you know, it's still COVID season. <laughs> Yeah, they, they can reach me at uh, RMP Studios with an S at live.com. Okay, cool. And you want them to send their, you know, acting resume or, or just whatever they have 
No, 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 I don't even do that. That's another thing that actors said they don't, they never heard of before because I don't ask for resumes or anything. All I need is headshots and full body shots. And then okay. we go from there. Right on, right no on. experience needed. Okay, yeah, but you have to be able to memorize your lines. That that's that. Yeah, yeah you got yeah, you got to memorize your lines. But a lot of people that came on, you know, um, like I say, I say about seventy five percent of the people that I've worked with have never acted before, never went yeah. to acting school or classes or anything, mm -hmm. you know. But in film, you can you a lot of people say they couldn't even tell. Right on, right on. Um, yeah, I mean, going back to, to Sharon Tolliver, she had acting experience, right? Uh, no, she she came on with me on a PI, on a project called PI Smooth. She did a, a part with well, just me and her, um, real real short part. And then after that, then she I brought on another project with Runners Two, and then I brought on Jean. But she never had any acting experience. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out where I know that name from. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everybody, um, give a big round of applause to Rico Mickens, not Suave. Um, thank you for coming on the show, brother. I really appreciate you. I don't want to have to keep you locked in your limo any longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I'm, I'm glad to be on the show. Right on, man. Thank it's you, it's uh. You. You know, glad to have you. Um, sorry you got locked out of your office. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've seen people coming out, but I couldn't go in there because, like, oh, man, I'm doing the show. I can't move. Oh, man, it's too late now. <laughs> right. Right on, right on. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you to Bill Carroll. Round of applause, everybody. Thank you, Rico Mickens. Um, unfortunately, um, Jason Walbert could not be in tonight as we originally planned. He is a special effects prop maker uh, out of Maryland. Uh, we're going to reschedule his interview. Um, so you will get to meet him. He does some amazing stuff, some amazing cosplay. Um, and I know at least Joseph uh, had some questions about lighting eyes up in a dragon or something like that. So um, you will finally get that answer, Joseph. But uh, thank you, everybody online that tuned in. Uh, thank you, Hodge. Hey. Any, anything you want to? Thanks, wanna Hodge. Thanks, thank, Hodge. You, Hodge. Thank, you, Hodge. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, and just just uh, <laughs> FYI, if uh, you ever need a guy to do soundtracks, he, oh, yeah. he does soundtracks for uh, for. Done before. Yes, he does soundtracks for films. Just in case, you know, if, if you ever need a guy, for there's a, a guy for a portfolio. Not even money. Yeah, just for portfolio. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So, all right. Uh, you got anything, Arch? Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. No, it's been a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know how you, talk, you, you just you talk too much, man. I do. You know, I'm, I'm gonna. I'll try to talk less next time. Oh, that should should be hard. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll recite like what's that Billy Joel and the REM songs. Just do the. That's my Ed McMahon. My <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a great night. Remember, tune in next Thursday at 8 p.m. when I have the marvelous, wonderful. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> oh, Hodge. Oh, it's for me, the marvelous Hodge. Hey. No. I'm Upcoming Nashville star Shelby Madison oh, will, will be on the show. Very good. very good, yes. Yes, Shelby Madison will be on the show. Um, we're going to see if we can't get maybe somebody that Hodge knows on the show, another musician. Who is that? For an upcoming show. Who is that? Uh, Christopher Berdeck of Torino Death Ride. Okay. Their, their vocalist actually is a grand bartender down at Spirits, Richard Simpson. Everybody knows him. Okay, everybody knows Richard. I don't know Richard. Richard. You don't know Richard. I don't go to the bars. He's been there forever. Oh. I might know. Well, okay, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And also thank you to FXBG Public Radio. Yes. EK the DJ. All right, Eric. Take us home. <laughs>